So there are many different ways we could solve this problem. First, we'll look at a way of solving it using a while loop. So we'll define our find element procedure. We'll use p as the name of the list and t as the name of the target, the element that we want to match. We'll define the loop to go through the elements of p. Similarly to the previous while loops, we've seen that go through lists. So we have our while loop. We've introduced the variable i. We'll use that as the index to go through the loop. The stopping condition for the while loop is when i reaches the len of p. So we want our test for the while loop to be i is less than len of p. In the block of the while loop, we want to check if the current element matches t. So we get the current element using p index i. And then we use the double equal to test if it's equal to t. If we find a match, meaning the two values are equal, then we want to return the index that we found. So the result should be the value of i, which is the index where we found the matching element. The risky thing about using while loops instead of for loops is it's really easy to forget that you need to increase the index variable. If we just left the loop like this, it would run forever because the value of i would never change unless the first element matched, in which case we return 0, the loop would just keep going on forever, again checking the first element. So we need to increase the value of i, and that's the end of the while block. The way we described what the find element procedure should do, if the element was not found, it should return negative 1. If we get to the end of the while loop without returning, that means we've gone through the while loop for all values of i up to len of p minus 1. We didn't find any element that matches, so we should return negative 1. So that's one way to define find element. I'll also show you a way to define it using a for loop. So the reason it's more natural to start thinking of defining find element with a while loop than a for loop is because the value that we want to return from find element is the index itself. When we use a for loop with the standard syntax of going through the elements of the loop, we don't keep track of the index. We just see each element in order. So we need to add something else to keep track of the index because that's the value we want to return. So we still need to use a variable to keep track of the index. We'll use i as that variable just like we did in the while loop version. Now instead of a while loop, we'll have a for loop. We don't need to think of the stopping condition here because it will just go through all the elements. Similarly to the body of the while loop, we check if the current element is equal to t. In the for loop, we can get the current element using the variable e. That's what gets assigned each time we go through the loop body to the value of the current element. So our test is using double equal to compare e and t. If they match, just like we did in the while version, we should return the result. The result we want to return is the index where we found the match. In the while version, that was clear. It made sense because we were looking at element p index i. In the version with a for loop, we have to be more careful to know where that index is. We're using the variable i to keep track of that index, so we'll return i. i starts at 0. Each time through the loop, we need to increase i, so we keep track of the current index as we go through the elements. As with the previous definition, when we had the while loop, if we got to the end without finding it, that meant that the element did not exist in p, and we should return negative 1. We'll do the same thing here.